China has achieved something that no other country has ever done before. The National Space Agency, CNSA, has brought samples from the mysterious far side of the moon to Earth for the first time with Chang'e 6. Chang'e 5 had already delivered rock samples from the near side, and it was precisely there, in the tiny grains of dust and rock, that researchers discovered something that absolutely no one would have expected in this form. A previously unknown mineral, traces of water, and evidence that the moon was volcanically active for much longer than we thought. And let's be clear, these discoveries could not only rewrite the history of the moon, they could also dramatically change the future of space travel. So be sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to know what sensational discoveries the Chinese probes have unearthed on our constant companion. The Chinese lunar revolution began in 2007 with the Chang'e 1 orbiter, which mapped the surface of our satellite in unprecedented detail. But that was only the beginning. Six years later, Chang'e 3 landed on the front side of the moon and deployed the Jade Rabbit rover, which explored the surface and collected initial soil data. The next milestone followed in 2019, when Chang'e 4 entered an area that none of us will ever see directly, the mysterious far side of the moon. In fact, the Jade Rabbit 2 it carried is the first rover in history to examine the hidden areas of our satellite. Since then, it has been rolling through ancient craters, analyzing once active volcanic landscapes, and collecting rocks from deep layers of the moon that were thrown to the surface by a massive impact. At the same time, in December 2020, Chang'e 5 brought lunar samples from the front side of the moon back to Earth for the first time since the Apollo missions, and with them, a series of fist-sized surprises. The samples contained a previously unknown mineral, traces of water, and evidence that the moon was volcanically active for much longer than previously thought. No less spectacular was the mission of Chang'e 6, which brought us samples from the far side of the moon for the first time ever. As a result, scientists are now able to compare the two faces of the celestial body and decipher its history even better. But why is the moon so important to experts in the first place? What secrets does it hold, and why does it also reveal something about Earth? The True Role of the Moon Almost everyone knows that the moon plays a key role in the formation of Earth's tides. However, the interplay of ebb and flow is by no means all that our satellite has to offer. The bottom line is that the moon can also help us shed more light on our own history, because many of its rocks are similar to those on Earth. And even though we still cannot say with absolute certainty how the moon was formed, the leading theory is that it was formed from material from the early Earth. In detail, the so-called impact theory is based on the assumption that a body about the size of Mars once crashed into the young Earth, hurling material into space from which the Moon was formed. In this case, the satellite would not only be a dusty companion, but a cosmic archive that tells us what our planet looked like billions of years ago. But the Moon's appearance is also a recurring focus of research, as the two sides of the Moon show striking differences. While the front side is adorned with dark lowlands of solidified lava, known as mare, such structures are much rarer on the backside. The same applies to lunar mountains and rills. But why this is the case has not yet been conclusively clarified. Possible explanations range from the influence of Earth to a different impact history. Interestingly, the moon also harbors valuable resources. Samples contain traces of helium-3, an element that could be of interest for clean nuclear fusion. In addition, water has been discovered, not only in the dark shadow craters at the poles, but also in minerals that formed in ancient, long-extinct volcanoes. This shows that the moon is by no means as dry as long believed, and that future moon settlers will have many more potential locations to choose from. What China Found on the Moon the Earth has truly waited a long time for lunar supplies, but after 44 years, the time had finally come again, and on December 16, 2020, the Chinese probe Chang'e 5 brought moon rocks back to Earth for the first time since the Apollo missions. Previously, only the Soviet Union and the USA had succeeded in doing this, 
which is why the 1.7 kilograms of soil samples that arrived in the northern Chinese steppe five years ago were eagerly awaited. Specifically, the samples came from a region with particularly young volcanic rock that had never before been examined in a laboratory. Analysis showed that, as expected, a good 90% of the rock is of local origin and consists of 1.6 to 1.7 billion-year-old mare basalt. As mentioned briefly earlier, this dark rock was formed when volcanism filled the lunar maria with lava, as evidenced, among other things, by the tiny beads of vitrified rock formed by the rapid cooling of molten rock droplets. According to chemical analyses, the glass beads originate from two volcanic fissures, now extinct, located 160 and 230 kilometers away. Surprisingly, however, the situation is quite different in the case of the remaining 10%. These are a colorful mixture of minerals, some of which originate from up to 1,300 kilometers away. Scientists assume that some of the exotic admixtures were stirred up by meteorite impacts and hurled to the sampling site. But that's not all. At the same time, a research team in Beijing also identified a previously unknown mineral, which was named Changi Site Y. This is only the sixth mineral to be discovered on the moon, and from a purely chemical point of view, it belongs to the group of phosphate minerals and forms colorless, transparent, columnar crystals. It also contains the isotope helium-3, which, as mentioned above, could be important for nuclear fusion in the future. But why is that? Well, when used together with deuterium, the reaction would not produce any radioactive waste, unlike classic nuclear fusion with tritium. The catch, however, is that no technology for commercial helium-3 fusion exists yet, and that huge amounts of the isotope would be needed to generate energy on a significant scale. Surprisingly late volcanism and the discovery of water. Apart from that, the analysis of the samples revealed another exciting detail. Our companion was volcanically active for much longer than previously thought. More specifically, the analysis showed that the basalt in Oceanus procellarum was formed 1.963 billion years ago, making this region one of the last volcanically active areas on the moon. Almost a billion years later, lava eruptions were still occurring here and a total of almost 2,000 cubic kilometers of lava is thought to have flowed during this phase. However, it's both interesting and puzzling that the samples do not contain unusually high amounts of radioactive elements. This means that the previous explanation that uranium, thorium, or potassium prolonged lunar volcanism is not correct. As a result, scientists are faced with a tricky research puzzle. For such a small celestial body as the moon, such late volcanism is difficult to explain, as its interior should actually have cooled down long ago. Currently, the Earth's tidal forces, or a previously unknown mineral composition of the lunar mantle, are being discussed as possible causes. However, another breakthrough achieved with the help of the samples is also being discussed. For the first time, chemically bound water has been detected directly in minerals. Unlike earlier measurements, which only provided indications of water signatures, laboratory analysis confirmed that even in sunlit regions, small amounts of water lie dormant. However, this water is not present in the form of ice or liquid water, but has tiny molecules firmly embedded in the mineral structures. And that has enormous significance for the future. The water could be used as drinking water, for oxygen production, or even as a raw material for rocket propulsion. For lunar bases, this means that they would no longer be limited to the dark polar craters. Theoretically, water could be found almost anywhere on the celestial body. But how, and this is the crucial question, could the moon's water actually be made usable? Well, Chinese scientists have already shown how it can be done. To extract relatively large amounts of water from the lunar soil, hydrogen-containing minerals are heated to produce water vapor. According to experts, this essentially simple approach could yield 50 to 76 liters of water from one ton of lunar dust. And while the insights that Chang'e 5 has given us into the front side of the moon have already made history, we should not forget that experts currently have another lunar iron in the fire. Last year, 
Chang'e 6 brought us rock samples from the far side of the moon for the first time. Scientists now have the revolutionary opportunity to explore the significant differences between the front and back sides firsthand, and perhaps find the answer to one of the most fundamental questions in lunar research. This may finally enable us to discover what is really responsible for the differences between the two halves of the moon. The analyses are still in full swing, but researchers describe the samples as a real goldmine for science and are optimistic that they will also yield groundbreaking findings. And just one click can get you a groundbreaking subscription. Simply press the thumbs up button and subscribe to never miss a new video from us again. See you soon.